All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake here. And you are joining us in the middle of a series. What is this series, Jake? Uh, it is called Prove It, and this is part of our apologetic series to kind of get the word out about why we believe what we believe. And uh, uh, part of that is showing evidence for the for the hope that you have, right? And, That's right. Uh, this is just a series where we're going through the evidence that shows why we believe that Torah is for the time period we live in right now. And it's a lot of scripture. It's just yep. scripture after scripture that support the claim. So right. if you're not sure and um, or you're trying to figure out how to explain this to someone else, maybe you can use some of these scriptures. Right. Write them down, search it out, look them up. You know, just don't take our word for it, but hopefully right. we can kind of point you that direction. And and if you're following this in, in a podcast, we have a visual part of this in YouTube under a playlist called Prove It. Right. And this is number five in that series, and so go check out the other four. And put something in the comments that tells us that you listened to what we said. Right. So, or that you learned something new. Yes, or if you, even if you have a question. Right. So, so right. also, subscribe and hit the notification bells and all the Visit the Sabbath Lounge. Check us out in the podcasting arena. That's right. Tell your friends. That's right. Well, we appreciate you uh, being here, and let's just jump right into it, Jake. So this right. is Prove It. Prove It. And where do we go? And we're talking about identity this time. Well, identity th theft is a crime, Jake. Oh. Well, now that I know, yes. then I can be held accountable, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yes, this is identity. We did sin. We did commandments. Uh, spiritual versus Spirit flesh, flesh, right? And now we're doing identity. Um, all right. And so number 21 uh, comes to us, brought to you by Matthew, Matthew fifteen twenty four. But he answered and said, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's interesting. So Yeshua came just for the house of Israel. It's, uh, yeah, the he in here is Yeshua, right? And they're like, hey, you, why don't you, uh, actually, this is where the lady comes to him and says, hey, uh, feed me some of the scraps. And he's, I'm not here, mm -hmm. but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you want to be of the house of Israel because that's who he's here for. Yeah, that's what I want to be. Right. And if you but look, yet, a lot of people will go, I'm not Israel, I'm a Gentile. Right. I don't want to be a Gentile. Yeah, and we'll get into that in a couple verses yeah. from now. But, um, and why you'd rather be one than t'other. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, I thought there was something else I wanted to say, but let's continue on. All right. Lost sheep of the house of Israel. Very important. Number 22, Romans 11, 1 through 36. Yep, this is like the whole chapter here. You want to read this whole chapter because it's kind of, it, if I just read a couple verses, it might sound out of context, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. So this is grafted into the olive tree of Israel. Right. So um, Paul's talking to these guys and he's saying, hey, I was sent to the Gentiles, and that's my mission. And then he talks about this idea of uh, the the jealous brother. Hang on. If, while you talk there, I can probably just look that up, and if you're going to read it, I can pull it up and scroll through it. Okay. So keep going. Sorry. All right. So, yeah, he's going to be talking about um, the, uh, the jealous brother, if you know the parable of the... Uh, the the son, right? The, yeah, the prodigal the son. The prodigal son, right. I was testing you, Matt. And so um, the jealous brother is is he's he's claiming in this scenario in Romans he's talking about <coughs> the Jewish people being the the jealous brother. And so when Matt pulls this up. We'll read it real quick, and we'll see that what he's talking about here. En Espanol. Let's see here. Did I pass it? 
What are you looking for? King James. Uh, what do you want? It doesn't matter. Right there. King James. Okay. We can do King James. Yeah. All right. Let's go to like 14-ish. Let's see. Okay. So he's talking about, let's start at like 15. But go back and read this in context when you get a chance. Uh, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. Uh, so he's talking about casting away uh, uh, Gentiles here. Um, and he, he's, all right, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll start in 13. For, that is, now you see why I put the whole chapter in there, because it's hard to find a good place to start, because it's all throughout it. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might have some of them, might save some of them, them which are his flesh are the Jewish people, because Paul's part of the, uh, part of the, he was a Pharisee, right? Mm -hmm. um, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches are broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partake of the root and fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against the branches, but if you boast... You bear not the root, but the root you. You will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and you stand by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if Elohim spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not you. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of Elohim on them which fell uh, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you shall also be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for Elohim is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, but it it paints such a clear picture. He's saying I'm cutting off the natural branches because they stop following me, and I'm grafting you Gentiles, who were once Gentiles, into the olive tree. You're no longer wild olive branches. Now you're a natural part of the natural because you're pulling from the root, which is Messiah. Mm. And so very good. He's saying if I can do that, how much easier. Don't get high-minded, because how much easier could I take the natural branches back, cut you mm. off, and put them back in place? Yeah, so very good. that's the whole point. And so your identity, when we're talking identity in this case, it's our identity needs to be that of being grafted in to the olive tree. Yeah, yeah. And so it's... Uh, And so that's the point with that. Yeah. yeah. And so, I don't know. I just think that's an amazing little tale he tells, a beautiful illustration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Right. Yeah, and that's something you really need to look at and study. I mean, it's complicated, compli complicated complex, and... Um, I know that was redundant, but... A lot of moving parts. But yeah, yeah, you got to look at it and think about it and study it out. Yep. So. All right, and then we move on to number 23, Ephesians 2, 10 through 13. For we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua unto good works, which Elohim hath therefore ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in the past Gentiles of the flesh, who are called uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that are that that at that time ye were without messiah being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without elohim in the word but now in messiah yeshua yehushua 
ye who believe, you who are, sorry, Yeshua, sorry, let me repeat. But now in Messiah Yehushua, ye who are sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Messiah. Right. So, sometimes Paul gets a little, like, wordy, but it gets, he's trying to get a point across. And he's dealing with certain groups of people, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's saying, you were before, let's see, let's see, uh, you're created, we, his, you know, he's talking to brethren, we were created unto good works. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about in a few episodes back mm -hmm. how there are these works that are related to our, that show our faith, right? Mm -hmm. And it says that basically God had ordained th this a long time ago. Right, that we should walk in, in them. Yeah, not uh, new. Right. And then he's so very important in times past because a lot of people like to say, no, we're Gentiles. I'm a Gentile mm -hmm. believer. And it clearly says here that Gentiles in the flesh is not a good thing. Right. And this is, you were in time past Gentiles, right? And you were called the uncircumcision by a sect that is called the circumcision mm -hmm. because they were circumcised. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was actually a sect that said you couldn't be saved unless you were circumcised. Right. Um, and at that time, when you were a Gentile, you were without Messiah. And you were an alien from the commonwealth of Israel. Now, if you look back to what we just read in uh, Romans 11 about being grafted in to the olive tree, the olive tree is Israel. So you were aliens from Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Uh, but now you who are afar off are made nigh. Near, near to what? Near to the commonwealth of mm -hmm. Israel. So you were an alien. You were far away. You were a Gentile. Now you're grafted into the olive tree and are part of the commonwealth of Israel. Yeah. yeah. And so that needs to be your identity. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes along with uh, in the Torah portion we recently read about Deuteronomy. He talks about how he's a, a God that comes near. Right. And that's the same kind of concept. You know, we're, we're made close. Uh, because he is a God that comes close, right. comes near. Uh, 24, Galatians 2, 14 through 15, and self was a shameless plug. Is that what you say? Yes. So we have a series on uh, Galatians. Do you have the gall to read Galatians? Galatians. <laughs> and so we would check that out if you have a second. But uh, anyway, the more importantly, uh, what it says in 2.14, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Yeah, so we go into this in pretty good depth, I think, in our Galatian study, mm -hmm. because, uh, so the, the quick one here is, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. The Gentiles are sinners, all right? And he's talking about, hey, we're Jews by nature. We're, we were raised in this stuff. We know how to not, we know what sin is. Yeah. And so we, and that we need to be away, not be partaking in it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you look at this, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? I go into detail, Matt and I, about why, uh, what he's really saying here is, how can you compel the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Now, do your yeah. own research yeah. on that, but from my study, that's what it says, not mm -hmm. why do you compel them. Yeah, yeah. It's how can you compel them to live as the Jews? Yeah, he's, you can tell he's definitely saying something here. He's saying something about being a Jew and living after the manner of Gentiles. Um, you know, he, he's definitely setting an argument up here about this is not this is not how you should be. Right. And then number twenty-five, Galatians two twenty. I am crucified with the Messiah. Nevertheless, I live; yet not I, but Messiah liveth in me. 
In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of Elohim, who loved me and gave himself for me. So That's this a song. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. Sing it. No, thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> we wouldn't do that to you guys. That's so. right. We want you to come back. <laughs> right. So, uh... And we I talk... said we had faces made for radio, but not voices made for radio. Right, that's true. That's true. We have voices made for uh, miming. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Lip syncing, maybe. Yes. Uh, that's, in, that's on Matt's other channel. Though. Yes, yes. Yeah. Lip syncing other real singers. Yeah. So we went through this in one of our earlier Prove It episodes about... Uh, I think it was the first one, right? Walk as I walk. Mm -hmm. Walk as Messiah walks, right? Uh, so we're crucified with Messiah. It's not we who live. It's Messiah who lives in us. When we look in the mirror, we should be seeing Messiah. When that silver has been uh, polished, we should see Messiah. When all the dross is gone and it's pure, we should see Messiah in the reflection, right? Yep. And so the dross is the sin, Right? That's the only thing that keeps us from being Messiah-like is sin, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's what he's saying. It's not I who live, but Messiah who lives in me. And Messiah walked a certain way. So if we're going to project that we're trying to be, we're, try, we're supposed to be trying to be like Messiah. Yeah. And he kept feast. He ate clean. He... Uh, did all the Torah stuff because otherwise he would have sinned yeah. and been in need of a savior of his own. Yep. That's all right. Number 26, Hebrews 8.8. 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So this is, he's going to start going into what the new covenant is here. And it's a quote from Jeremiah. But who is the covenant with? I hear a lot of people say they're, they're new covenant believers. Mm. They'll say they're new covenant Gentile believers. Mm. But who's the new covenant with? It's with Israel. The house of Israel and the house of, house Judah. of Judah. So you have to either, if you're going to claim that the new covenant is for you, you have to claim the identity for whom the covenant applies. Which is clearly not Gentiles. Right. It's house of Israel, house of Judah. So, uh, so the, again, the idea of the identity is important. It's, it follows throughout the whole of yeah. Scripture. Yeah, and it's very important. And that, to me, that is one of the things that really broke, broke it for me in my brain was was realizing that my identity was Israel, and then you're like, oh. Yeah, now when you're looking back and he says, this is for Israel to mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that's me. Yeah, and before you just were like, oh, whatever. That's for them, that's Israel. Yeah. yeah. That's old news. Yep. And then number 27, James 1.1. 1, 1. James, a servant of Elohim and of the master Yahushua Messiah, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So, yeah, this is the... So, who did he write to? First verse of the book he's writing here. And he's writing clearly to the 12 tribes. Right. Well, what if you say, well, I'm not part of the 12 tribes? Then you, you just rip this part out of your book, right? He's not talking to you. Well, you know, <laughs> that's an interesting argument because basically, and one way to look at this is... Um, but the opposite of that is during the when the northern kingdom got dispersed, that bloodline in essence went all around the world, and so I would imagine that if you really studied that bloodline out, um, there's that that there's probably all of us may have a little bit of the of technically the twelve tribes in us when it got dispersed and went all over the world, and people intermarried and intermingled and. Um, you know, so yeah, I hear maybe a lot of the here to say that yeah, like what not exactly what you're saying. So when we talked about, um, well, Messiah had to keep the law because he was a Jew, 
And then people will say, well, I'm not a Jew. Mm -hmm. Well, are you a an Issacharian? Mm -hmm. Are you a Zebulonite? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Mm -hmm. You don't know. Mm -hmm. You very well may be. Yeah. And may... And, and, and so if you may not have any clue. Exactly. So if your standard is, well, I have to be of the tribes for it to count, then if you don't know, then <laughs> yeah, then you yeah. could be. Yeah. And that might apply to you. That's uh, so the conservative way to deal yeah. with it, the safe way is, oh, well, I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, and I think that that's a you know, that's something you'd have to study out, but I do think it's very possible that um that in fact that Jewish, if you will, DNA did go all over the world and got in every bloodline, and um, you know we just haven't figured all this out yet. We may not have the technology to know, but I mean it's it's just interesting. It is interesting. All right, so moving on, twenty-eight Matthew five forty-eight. Therefore, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Yep. And, and then you put in parentheses, how can we be like him if we don't understand his character? And before I walked in Torah, I, I had a good friend who was a, he was a wise Bible scholar. And he, would, he brought this scripture out to me one day. And he was like, Matt, you know, I believe he meant that when he said that, to be perfect. But he, he did not understand that perfection as being in the law. But he understood, he, he believed that that scripture was true. And that always kind of stuck with me. And he was on to something, and he, he was right about that. I mean, he is telling us to do that. Right. And uh, now, do you, okay, now, do you as a father give your child a command that he cannot keep? No. And uh, if, I, if, if I you do, do, I'm a terrible father. Well, be like, I am not going to love you unless you go to the moon in a rocket ship today. Right. I mean, that's ridiculous. Right. So uh, one of the things I think about is maybe we would give them something beyond their capability to stretch them as a father. Mm -hmm. So it would be a command to them that they couldn't necessarily fulfill. But if you knew... I'm stretching them. I'm not. I'm giving them something to strive for, mm -hmm. and they fail at it. Do you punish them for that then? No, you're happy that they attempted and tried and right. learn have something they can learn from. Right. So there's one. Of, there's only one of two things happening here. Either you can be be perfect. You're made perfect by Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. Can you keep the Torah then? You well, can't you say can. you, you can't say you can't. Yeah. If you've just said that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then additionally, um, are you going to be punished for something that you aren't able to do? Mm -hmm. And is that a righteous judgment? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So, well, that comes to the end of episode six. Improve it. Five. 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 Episode five. Yep. So. So uh, if you're just jo joining in the middle of this, go check out some other things. Uh, there's at least uh, four more that you haven't listened to. Right. So, and uh, we'd appreciate it if you would. And Jake, what do they need to do? Uh, like and subscribe and uh, watch our other videos and Come. postings and episodes and tell us what you think about them. Leave some comments. Uh, maybe point out some verses that uh, uh, maybe we've missed. Now, It'll continue on. We have more episodes to do, so uh, maybe wait till the end to post. If it's got this topic, identity, maybe post mm -hmm. something, some verses about identity. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, so hopefully, this shows you how important it is uh, to know what your identity is, and maybe, just maybe, we've proven that, uh, or at least started to prove in these first few episodes how Torah is uh, important today. Amen. All right. Well, we appreciate you listening. And this is Matt and Jake signing out.